you had a wonderful Christmas with relatives and friends and got everything on your wish list. I certainly had a wonderful Christmas. Kerrigan, I got to see my brother and his wife who I haven't seen in years and it was really nice and my mom and my kids. It was beautiful. What about you? Uh, same. Uh, spending time with the family just is mm -hmm. so great during the holiday season. I thankfully get to see my family pretty often. They're right across the state line in Louisiana. It's yeah. about a six hour drive, um, but I got to spend a lot of time with Yay. them. And um, what I had on my list this year was that mm -hmm. my pipes were going to remain safe <laughs> through this whole freeze. And thankfully I came back home last night and I was like, please, please, please work, work. And uh, you're so lucky. Everyone, good. everyone I know, our boss, my mom, um, my friend, all their pipes burst. All of them. Oh. They all had water out, but it was fine. It was like camping. It was good. <laughs> we made it through. <laughs> yeah. Christmas to remember. Yeah, no, no, no question. <laughs> but it is warmer this morning. And I think a lot of people are thankful for that. Uh, with the exception of Conroe, you're the only uh, one that's a little bit cooler today. But Galveston, 10 degrees warmer than what you were on Christmas morning. Off in Beaumont, 12 degrees warmer. Feeling like a whole new season as we approach the end of this week. We are going from freezing temperatures uh, earlier on today to spring like temperatures in the mid 70s to end the week. Looking at tips right now, Conroe still at that freezing mark here in Houston, 40 degrees, 930, and we're above the freezing mark. It's a good day in town. Galveston, 49, Beaumont currently sitting at 46. So we have a week, this odd week, between Christmas and the new year. What's going on in town? Well, the Texas Bowl, that's Wednesday. It's a pretty big event. 3 o'clock, our temperature 73 degrees, 70 by 6 p.m. And by 10 o'clock after the game's over, 68 cloud cover building in by that time. But Texas Tech and Ole Miss will be playing in this. 8 p.m. is kickoff time right here at NRG Stadium. Now, this weekend will be a good time if you have any New Year's Eve or New Year's Day plans. The weekend also encompasses another holiday just like Christmas Eve and Christmas Day fell on Saturday and Sunday. Same story goes for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Saturday and Sunday worked out perfectly this year. So great weather if you have any type of fireworks shows that you want to go to. Sunshine through and through with those temperatures nice and mild uh, throughout the afternoons as well. Now getting into our seven day forecast here, uh, there is a little bit of a hiccup by the end of this week. Thursday and Friday is going to be rainy. So toss out the heavy coats for the end of this week. Break out the umbrella, put that in your front seat instead, and um, then you can again pick up the umbrella and pick up the heavy coats. You can be um, carefree by the end of the weekend. You don't have to carry anything around with you with perfect conditions for our Saturday and Sunday. But this afternoon, 58 sunshine, oh, a beautiful, beautiful day. Oh, I love the look of those weekend numbers, but I will be on a plane to Honolulu on that Saturday. Oh, so you stay here for the freeze in the moment. I know. Nice weather. You, I know. I know. <laughs> but you know what? At least I'll be flying from sunny and 70 to sunny and 70. So it'll be good. Yeah, best All of both right. worlds. Thank you, Kerrigan. Have a good rest of your day. Now let's start with a little fun. If you're in your 40s, <clears throat> like me, you're probably a fan of National Lampoon's Vacation. But one family is taking that fandom to a whole new level. The Griswold Superfans. Take a look. Cheers. Dad, can you explain again what we're doing? What we're looking for today is the Griswold Family Christmas. Travis Broadbooks. I'm a Garfield kid. Now went to school in Rogers. And just love doing a little Christmas vacation. I'm Reagan Gray, and uh, we're also from Rogers, and we just got roped into this. <laughs> this car would be the perfect prop to do the Christmas vacation themed parades for the, for the Christmas parade. It's a beaut. Year two, my buddy Reagan here called and said, hey, can we buy an RV and be the Cousin Eddie family? And I said, sure, come on, let's do it. There are over a thousand command strips that hold those lights on that car. The roots from where we truly dig the tree up, and which is probably our favorite part. Every year we dig up a new tree, strap the tree down, then have to wrap the tree in lights. So right now we're sitting at just over 6,000 lights on the car and tree which just makes it, again, just like Clark Griswold's style, that thing's gonna light up the world whenever we turn those lights on every year. I'm Gloria Broadbooks. I'm Clark's uh, mother. 
And now that I've been part of this, uh, whatever this is, um, it's made me appreciate my family more, <laughs> that they can still have fun. It wasn't just about when they were kids. As adults, my kids can still have fun. And to watch my grandkids and watch Reagan and Casey with their kids and see them grow and be a family. It's just all about family. See around the tree is sometimes a challenge, but I got a great co-pilot with my wife and she makes make sure I'm not running anybody as we're going down the road. Every year we think we're about done. My wife reminded me our youngest is 11, so she said we have to do it till at least she goes to college. So we're another seven or eight years away from that. So. We'll do it as long as these old jalopies keep running. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas from NWA Christmas Vacation. Oh my. Now, if you're traveling soon, make sure you do a little yoga or some meditation beforehand to get all of that stress out because it's a wild one out there. Hundreds of flights canceled, snow drifts in some states, bomb cyclones in others, whatever that is. Experts say if you have to fly, arrive early, be kind and patient. That's not the experts, that's me. And make sure you dress warm. Unless, of course, you're lucky enough to be going to Hawaii. And then just make sure you take along a little aloha. Now, some call them brave. I think they may just be a little cuckoo. Members of a Berlin swimming club dressed in Santa costumes and sang carols on Sunday before plunging into 32 degrees, a lake that's 32 degrees. What? Around 40 members took that icy dip. They claim there are health benefits, but I'm going to need to hear that from professionals because I'm just not so sure. Now, Pope Francis reiterated his Christmas wish, a wish for peace. The Pope addressed a crowd of thousands on St. Stephen's Day on Sunday as he delivered his prayer at the Vatican. The Pope also again expressed his desire to see the end to the Ukraine war. Mentioning the many Ukrainian flags flying in the crowd, he asked for for peace for what he called the martyrized people of Ukraine. And cowboy fans, he might be the father. Jerry Jones has been ordered by a Texas judge to take a paternity test. The judge issued the order for genetic testing Thursday in a paternity case brought by Alexandra Davis, who previously alleged in a separate lawsuit she was conceived from a relationship Jones had with her mother in the 90s. Now, attorneys for Jones did not immediately respond to the request for comment Friday, but said in court filings that they intend to appeal that decision. Now, speaking of dads, the frigid weather didn't stop one dad from bringing the holiday cheer by way of 25,000 lights outside of his house. But as Brittany Flowers reports, it's all for a good cause. Take a look. Good evening. Welcome to the Cedar Lake Light Show. More than 25,000 lights. It's obviously progressed over six years. Ryan Kidd gets the same few responses every year when he sets up his light show. Your neighbors must hate you. Consumers Energy must love you. And then the other one is, okay, Clark. And I go, hey, he's a mentor. Despite having kids, he sets most of it up by himself. This is dad's project, they say, and my wife is the same way. So I spend probably about 25 to 30 hours putting it up. But it's more than just the lights themselves people get to enjoy. Ryan strategically picked five songs and synced the lights to go with them. I have it all ran on a little director. It creates its own little radio station in the area. You'd think this would make for a hefty energy bill. These are all LED lights and intermittent, so they don't take a lot of power. I think I've estimated maybe about $15 for the entire season. Every year the display grows, so does the community response. When you put the time to put in this, uh, you want people to enjoy it. For Ryan, the greatest reward is seeing and hearing the joy this display brings people of all ages. This is the coolest thing I've seen all day. But more than that. We do collect donations. 100% of the donations actually go to a local charity that we choose. In 2020, the Cedar Lake Light Show raised $1,500. Last year, it raised 1000 This year, donations will go to Keys for Kids Ministries. I love just using technology, using just a skill that I've acquired um, and, and being able to put it in, uh, watching kids and hearing kids from the inside, even like screaming, yelling and, uh, and enjoying it is, is definitely the fun part of it all. Now that was Brittany Flowers reporting. When we come back, are you planning a New Year vacation? Well, if so, you're probably not alone. The travel industry is booming once again, but a new trend is on the rise, eco-tourism. We'll take a look at that when we come back. When couples cause chaos, 
Judge Mathis keeps the peace. Can you divorce us right now? <laughs> Judge Mathis, next on CW 39 Houston. What does moving forward look like? Houston Community College has hundreds of choices. Small class sizes and personalized support to help you do just that. Enroll today for classes and frame your future with HCC. This week on The John Ackerberg Show. 70% of the world's population live in oral communities. Half of those people are functionally illiterate. And so what we feel God has called us to do is to do a dramatized recording of scripture. Today, you will hear what happens when people hear the Bible in their own language for the very first time. Watch The John Ankerberg Show each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. right here on KIAH-TV. Attention seniors, if you are considering enrolling in a Kelsey Care Advantage plan, you must possess the following. The desire to get real. Let's face it, you're not looking for ex-quarterbacks or 70 sitcom actors to help you decide what coverage is right for you. You want a plan with real star power, real coverage you can count on, real benefits you can use, and real savings that make a real difference. That's exactly what you get with Kelsey Care Advantage, Texas' best Medicare Advantage plan. With Kelsey Care Advantage, you not only get comprehensive dental, vision, hearing, OTC allowances, and more, you also have the freedom to see any doctor, even out of our network. Plus, you pay zero monthly premiums, zero primary care co-pays, and zero drug deductibles. Kelsey Care Advantage is the one Medicare Advantage plan you can really feel good about. If you're ready to get real about Medicare, Enroll in Kelsey Care Advantage today. 713-442-7801. The Rooms to Go New Year's sale is going on now. And things are looking good. Buy stylish new pieces, stunning new packages, and get 55-month interest-free financing. Picture it. Room after room of amazing furniture. The hottest living rooms, gorgeous bedrooms, elegant dining rooms, and more. With low monthly payments and 55-month interest-free financing, it's time to celebrate. The Rooms to Go New Year sale is going on now. Times of change like the one we're in can open up opportunities. Houston Community College can help with over 200 programs, 20 campuses, and financial aid. Enroll today for classes and frame your future with HCC. Welcome back. A look back now at one of our favorite stories of the year. The only thing better than elephants are baby elephants. And what's better than that? Twin baby elephants. Two of them. Take a look. Given the all clear, the zookeepers let out the three generation elephant herd. Targa, brought here in 1990, her daughter Molly, born in 1997, and her twin boys. So this is who? This is Yad. And here comes Tukata now. Not only can elephant collections manager Ashley Shepard tell them apart. Okay, bud. There you go. Stay in there. She can handle the double trouble. Hey, 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 hey. Nope. Being small enough to fit through the fence won't be a problem for long. They're gaining weight every single day, which is wonderful. Uh, they're doing all the things they're supposed to be doing now, learning how to be elephants, playing with their surroundings, exploring. All of that stuff tells us they're doing great. Everybody's in shock. We're even still takes us away that each time you look down, you're like, there's two. It's no overstatement to call the survival of both a miracle. The few successful cases have only happened in Asia and Africa, never before in Europe or North America. Yad was born first in the early morning of October 24th. Nine hours later, uh, rear feet. <laughs> Tukata had trouble breathing, a low heart rate and low temperature. It took an oxygen tube and 40 minutes to stabilize him and reintroduce him to mom. The challenge isn't over, considering the tricky birth, the natural vulnerability of twins, and experience from past elephant deaths. But there's already cause for celebration, felt in every corner of the zoo. Stopping by the cafe, there's a cookie. And the gift shop, elephants are the best seller. I'd encourage everybody to come see these as often as possible because every day they're learning new things and being different, so it's, it's, it's just great. At a time when miracles seem hard to come by, the world is finding two at the Rosamond Gifford Zoo. So 
cute. And you're probably planning a trip in 2023. Many people are. But have you ever considered ecotourism? It's a new trend that offers up adventure and philanthropy. And many countries are seeing a resurgence in tourism. And with a long break due to COVID closures, it's a welcome sight. Some countries, in an effort to curb the negative impact of tourism, are turning to ecotourism, pairing environmentally conscious travel with adventure-seeking travelers. Camel safaris became the latest eco-friendly way to see wildlife in Kenya's national parks. The animals are considered better for the environment because they don't emit noxious fumes or tear up the ground beneath them. And conservationists say ecotourism isn't just a marketing ploy, it's real and it's a great way to spread awareness. Ecotourism is not a hoax, it's real. This brings nature closer to us and us closer to nature. And the more close to your nature, the more you understand it, the more you like it, and the more, the less that you will not destroy it, the more you realize that pollution is harming the environment. Other countries offering ecotourism, Costa Rica, Rwanda, and Malaysia. And while some countries are rebounding, others are not. And for many citizens of those countries, the only choice is to leave. And some of those asylum seekers were treated to a warm welcome and holiday cheer in New York City. It was several rooms filled with so much Christmas joy and love. More than 100 asylum seekers and their families enjoying a Christmas party here at this Upper West Side Synagogue, SAJ, which stands for the Society for the Advancement of Judaism. These 40 volunteers were also part of Team TLC, a migrant family support organization. I've been working with Team TLC at the Port Authority. They are the group that has mobilized volunteers is welcoming these immigrants and asylum seekers but we know that most of them are in shelters they're getting no services McGee and they keep coming back to the Port Authority for help most of these Spanish-speaking families up from Venezuela and Ecuador arrived in New York City with only the clothes on their backs they are living in city shelters that used to be hotels these volunteers say they need everything it's a wonderful Christmas party what can be done the day after Christmas and the day after that? Well, we have to get working papers. We've been pushing as a council member. I want the Congress to come up with the TPS, which would give working papers quicker. These folks all want to work. And then second, we have to work on the housing and the food in the hotels and shelters. The little ones posed for pictures with Santa, received hats and gloves and toys and steaming hot food. And the gratitude and love was everywhere on this Christmas day. They feel thankful because in Ecuador they never had this, even gifts and food. I love that story. Now, our veterans are no stranger to travel, many making long treks over the holiday to see loved ones. And Brooke Schaefer caught up with a few for the happy holiday homecoming. Across the country, some of our military men and women are headed home for the holidays. These Marines are back from Haiti. We got a present for you, Dad. Oh, you got a present for me? <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Wait till Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> And in Texas, a special surprise for a young girl who got to hug her dad just in time for Christmas. In Miami, Florida, at one of the nation's busiest airports, we met Tashara Smith, a member of the Army Reserves, headed to see her family in St. Louis, Missouri, for the first time in about a year. I mean, you miss your family, um, you miss important holidays, um, siblings and everything like that. So it can be hard, but like with my battle buddies and everything, we, we make it a family. So whenever you guys on radio. We met Smith inside the airport's military hospitality lounge, a space away from the crowds run by Vietnam veteran Angel Rodriguez. Our military men and women uh, made a huge sacrifice for this nation. And the least that we could do for them is to provide a comfortable environment. A 
a comfortable, quiet environment amidst the hustle and bustle of what's been described as a chaotic travel season. Rodriguez said they are in desperate need of volunteers and donations. But even still, he described it as a family inside these walls of people who understand the sacrifice, especially during the holidays. Shanice Morgan has served in the Army for 17 years. She's ending her vacation, headed back to base in South Korea. The sacrifice is um, my family. I know that they miss me a lot, and I miss them as well. And um, I only get a few moments to, to visit, and um, that, that's the sacrifice. Everybody's growing up, and I'm missing everything. Oh, so much love. Now, that was Brooke Schaefer reporting, and we will be right back. News Nation senior national correspondent Brian Enton is our eyes and our ears in Moscow, Idaho. Katie Gonzalez's injuries were significantly more brutal. Very, very big find uh, that you've discovered, but even more complicating. The Rooms to Go New Year sale is going on now, and things are looking good. Buy stylish new pieces, stunning new packages, and get 55 month interest free financing. Picture it room after room of amazing furniture, the hottest living rooms, gorgeous bedrooms, elegant dining rooms, and more. With low monthly payments and 55 month interest free financing, it's time to celebrate. The Rooms to Go New Year sale is going on now. Injured in a car wreck? Call Jim Adler, the Texas Hammer, to get what the law says you deserve. Hi, I'm Micah with SellToMicah.com, and we want to buy your house. I'll make you an as-is cash offer on your house within 24 hours. Whether it's a total fixer-upper or in perfect condition, SellToMicah.com is the easiest way to sell your house. When you sell your house to SellToMicah.com, there are no fees, no commissions, no banks, and no repairs. Just go to SellToMicah.com for a free cash offer 24 hours a day. That's SellToMicah.com. Ever hear the one about the frog? Put a frog in a pot of boiling water and it'll jump right out. Here's my resume. But put a frog in a pot of cool water and slowly heat it up and that frog will boil. It's a lie. But as a metaphor for us and all that we go through as veterans, it's, real world experience. it's a story that rings true. We make excuses for how we feel. We push everything down. We tell ourselves the lie that it's easier to stay in that boiling water to disconnect, and some days, maybe, it is. But you've never been interested in easy. Reaching out is hard. Do it anyway. You're not alone. You've got this. You are not a frog. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. Saturday, January 14th. They're furry. Super cute. They're funny. What is happening right now? They're working hard for their money. I'm going to tip 50%. Incredible service. World's Funniest Animals. New episodes return Saturday, January 14th, only on The CW. The Neighborhood, today at 4 and 4.30 on CW 39 Houston. Welcome back. A small town, a close community, devastated by gun violence. As Monica Madden reports, this Christmas in Uvalde, Texas, the celebration was muted. The town square in Uvalde has all the signs of holiday cheer, but there are still signs something is missing. That gift that you normally would buy, they're not going to be able to buy that gift because there's nobody there. Instead of presents, 21 angel figurines sit under a tree, marking the 21 killed by a gunman in May. And you felt them. You Jesse Rizzo will be missing his niece, Jackie. You go celebrate at their sacred ground, which is a cemetery. You know, that's painful. That's real. This is what we're fighting for. This Berlinda Ariola won't get to spoil her granddaughter Amory with holiday gifts. Amory's keeping us all going, and as well as the other the other victims, we've all become a big family. While their fight for transparency and accountability is far from over, she's now looking toward the upcoming legislative session. 
Some family members are calling for a ban on semi-automatic weapons. It's a big stretch. But many are calling to raise the age limit to buy such weapons from 18 to 21. We're going on deaf ears, and so we're hoping somebody out there is listening. Democratic Senator Roland Gutierrez says he's listening. He's already filed an age limit bill and is working on other gun restrictions. There's not a greater issue in this state. There are many of my colleagues in the Senate who have suggested that raising the age limit is not out of the question. He'll face the iron fist of Senate President Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. The Republican has been adamant in his belief that gun control is not a solution. No matter what you do, there's going to be someone to find a, another area that's vulnerable. But we can and need to do more in the area of mental health. In the aftermath of previous Texas mass shootings, state Republicans have said it's the person, not the weapon, citing concerns of limiting Second Amendment freedoms of law abiding gun owners. Gutierrez thinks there's room for negotiation. Florida took 23 days after the Parkland shooting to have extreme race protective orders, to raise the minimum age limit to 21. This was in a Republican controlled body. Throw the partisanship out of the way here. Let's do what's right for our children. It's one thing some victims' families say could help them move forward. We're stuck on May 24th. And that was Monica Madden reporting. Now, before we go, a look at Christmas around the world from California, where cyclists don Santa suits and surfers Santa hats, to Kenya, where sparklers lit up the sky, to right here in Texas, where a deep freeze couldn't possibly stop the holiday cheer. Wreaths and lights adorn homes, a reminder that we may all celebrate it differently, but with the same love and joy around the world. Now, thank you so much for being with us this morning. We'll see you back here tomorrow for more Houston Happens. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and you're ready to get back to work next week. We'll see you tomorrow.